and on probably the third time of trying, we're going to start a little vlog series, I suppose, about the current miniseries in RTE called Charlie. The reason I say third time is that the first time I messed up the new camera settings, the second time I forgot to turn the microphone on and was talking for about five minutes. And yeah, technology is complicated. Anyway, this new miniseries, Charlie, currently airing on RT1, is about Charles J. Hawhey, who was the Taoiseach, Prime Minister of Ireland, on three occasions from the late 70s up until the early 90s. And this series covers his life from 1979 until 1992. What I'm intending to do here is a slightly informal style of vlog review, I guess, that will cover each of the three part series. But first, for the benefit of you who don't know who Charlie Hawley is, I'm going to give a little bit of a background on him. Hawley was quite a controversial figure. He attempted to import illegal guns for the IRA in the 1970s, which almost ruined his career. And he's remembered for a lot of shady dealings with businessmen and holding an offshore bank account, living an extravagant lifestyle while Ireland was struggling economically, and spending taxpayers' money on shirts and fine dining. Much of his later years were spent being investigated by government tribunals. The series stars Aidan Gillen as Charlie Hawkey and Gillen, you may know from The Wire, from Game of Thrones, where he played a character whose name I cannot pronounce, and Love Hate. I have never really watched any of those programs, so... I assume he's good in them. You tell me. The show cost 4 million euro to make and began its run on the 4th of January, so I am a little behind, but I'm going to catch up as time goes by. I was interested to look at this program because Hawhey was a rather fascinating character. When you look at what people like politicians and historians have said about him, they tend to say something to the key of, he was a very talented politician, but he was far too interested in power and money. The first episode takes us from 1979 to 81, which is his first reign as Taoiseach, and a lot of stuff happens. It was a busy, busy time. Ireland's economy is going down the drain. Jack Lynch, the then Taoiseach, resigns, both as Taoiseach and as leader of Fianna Fáil. There are ongoing problems in Northern Ireland, which leads to IRA prisoners going on hunger strike. And the episode ends with the Stardust Fire in February 1981, where 48 people died in a fire at a nightclub in Hawhey's own constituency in Artane, Dublin. This resulted in Hawhey delaying plans to call an election, and when the election was finally called in June, he lost. There's a lot of stuff happening in this, but it, it doesn't really feel like it. And the reason it doesn't feel like it is because it focuses primarily on Hawhey and his close associates, chiefly between PJ Mara and Hawhey. PJ Mara, played by Tom Von Lawler, was Hawhey's right-hand man, and the two carry the episode. They are in pretty much every scene, and the, the chemistry is just fantastic when the two are on the screen together. Especially early in the episode when they are trying to assure how he will be elected as leader of Fianna Fáil, and subsequently Taoiseach. You end up seeing all the political wrangling that goes on, the promises of drink-driving offences, and Debts will vanish. After that, we see our first brown envelope as we see Hawhey on his palatial estate and Des Trainer is handing him a lot of money saying it's to cover his living expenses, which were obviously quite considerable. And there are a whole swarm of people that you'll recognise if you know Irish politics. If you don't, I'm going to put things up so people will be able to say, oh, okay, that's who that is because... Uh, Admittedly, that is a slight problem with the pacing of the episode because it is so fast, people appear and you kind of go, who was that again? There's Albert Reynolds, who would go on to be Taoiseach, and Brian Lenhan Sr., who was Hawhey's Minister for Foreign Affairs, whose sister, Mary O'Rourke, herself a former TD, was not that happy with the way he was portrayed. And, to be honest, he is a little bit gormless and a kind of an oaf. But that is paid off the end of the episode when Lenhan makes a rather ill-advised comment about uh, saying Irish unity would happen within the next 10 years and subsequently annoyed both the British and the Ulster Unionists. As for his personal life, you don't really see that much of it. You just see his palatial country home and his racehorses. One of his most famous speeches was when he went on television and told the Irish people they were living well beyond their means. Yeah, juxtaposition in the episode is that 
that speech is played over a shot of Hahi walking to a magnificent garden party in his own home where people are downing champagne by the bottle and cut to the next day and people are driving away in a fancy car and Des Trainers counting all these checks in front of him. Just to highlight the hypocrisy of the entire statement, if you didn't already know. This was a man who owned his own island. I don't mean Ireland. He actually had an island that he bought and he had a home on and he lived in. And its name is very difficult to pronounce, so I'm going to wait until the next episode when it's important to pronounce it. And in the first episode of this series, we get an awful lot of references to Hahi as a would-be king or a would-be emperor. And, really, his personal aesthetic sort of fit the bill. Just take a look at this. What we don't see is Hahi's wife Maureen or his children. Not once. We do see his mistress, though, columnist Terry Keane. Although it wasn't until 1999, on the Late Late Show, that she made it public that she'd had an affair with Hahi, who was the sweetie who had always turned up in her columns for American viewers. I mean, the Late Late Show. Not the Late Late Show. Just to clear that up a little bit. Lucy Kohu plays Terry Keane, and she wafts in and out of it. Mostly she's seen in bedroom scenes with Hahi, but... There's one time when she does go to Paris with him, and that is a political trip, but uh, apparently they didn't make plenty of those trips themselves, and Paris is where Hahi would pick up his incredibly expensive taxpayer-paid-for shirts. Now, these videos are more informal, and I don't give myself as much time to research them as I would normally want to, so as far as the historical accuracy of the whole thing, well, as far as I can tell, it's fairly good. The only gripe I've really seen is that journalist Geraldine Kennedy is portrayed as having worked for the Sunday Tribune at the time when she was actually working for the Irish Times. And I will give you one guess as to where I got that from. I did notice that BBC Northern Ireland had a little bug, like a little logo in the top corner of the screen, which probably didn't happen, but that is incredibly nitpicky. Overall, it's pacey, it's intriguing, it's, it's funny, it's it's fascinating, and once it ended, I was really looking forward to watching the second episode, so I'll come back to you in a little while and tell you what I thought about that one.